Welcome to Willow's World of DIY. I'm Willow and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about powder coating. This is going to be a three part series. In this first part I'm going to be talking about preparing your metal surface to be powder coated. I'll give you some tips and tricks along the way. Let's get to it. These are some rusty parts off of my truck that I'm going to be powder coating. I'm using this reclaimed sandblast cabinet and I'm using aluminum oxide blast media. This is the blast media that we used at the powder coating shop, so it's what I use at home as well. Aluminum oxide is the only blast media that I know of that will blast through powder coating. These parts are about 3 16 of an inch steel like thickness, so I'm running 120 PSI on the blast blaster. If you're blasting thinner metal you want to reduce that pressure down or if you're blasting aluminum um, you probably only want to run about 60 psi and keep the nozzle of the gun back further if you're you know blasting aluminum versus what I'm doing here. If you're powder coating for its durability uh, blasting is a very important step for the durability of the powder. If you powder coat over a smooth surface on the metal uh, the powder wheel chip, you know, if you hit it with a hammer or something, it's it's only a little bit stronger than paint if you don't have a blasted surface for it to adhere to. But if you powder coat over a blasted surface, the powder is extremely durable and hard. You can beat it with a hammer, it won't chip. Um, it's really hard to chip it, you know, or break it uh, once it's blasted, you know, over blasted metal. And you want to make sure that if you have to modify the metal in any way, weld, grinding, you know, any of that stuff, you need to do that all before you sandblast. Powder coating won't feel any deviations in the metal or holes if you have like pinholes in your welds or anything like that. So you've got to make sure that you take care of that stuff first. Okay, I have those parts all sandblasted. You want to make sure you have gloves so you don't get any oils from your hands on the metal. And you want to inspect them and make sure that you have a nice uniform blast across the piece. You don't have any paint left over anywhere. Make sure that you got your edges and inside these little holes as well. Um, if you have a good blast, then you're going to have a good coating. If you don't have a good blast, then it'll peel up. Now that I have the parts sandblasted, I'm going to go ahead and blow them off with the compressed air. Okay, this is a perfect example of what blasted metal looks like with oil. So if you have an oil spot, they'll be dark. So that means it needs to be degreased. If you coat it with the oil spot like this, you're gonna have a fish eye where that oil spot is. So make sure, you know, you know I always degrease before I blast. So if the metal has any type of built up grease on it, I always degrease it all before I sandblast. I use a reclaimed sandblast system, so if I blast with all that grease on it, it's going to get in all the blast media, and then you're going to be blasting that continually onto all your parts. So you want to make sure that you degrease before you sandblast, and then if you see anything like this after you sandblast, you want to degrease it again. I use a lacquer thinner. Um, that's what we always used in the powder coating, you know, professional powder coating shop that I worked at. So um, you could use an acetone too, but acetone um, affects the powder. So if there's any type of residue left over on the surface of the metal and you use an acetone, it can affect your powder and your, your overall coating. So we, at the powder coating shop, we always stayed away from the, the acetone and we preferred to use lacquer thinner. This is my makeshift powder coating booth set up. You can see I have my jack stands on either side. I have a metal rod supporting it and I'm going to hang off the metal rod and I have my vac shop vac at the back of the box.
And there's a lot of ways you, you can hang this. Um, you can hang it this way, you know, this way, you can hang it that way. I choose to hang it this way because you got to think about the way the powder is going to build up as you're shooting it. If you have it hung like this, your powder is going to build up in this bottom part and it's going to be hard to shoot on the top angle. Because these are tight angles, you'll get a Faraday cage effect. So you want to make sure, you want to think about how you're going to hang the part and the way the powder is going to lay on it. Because if it's, if anything's going to be flat, you're going to have buildup. You know, you'll have buildup in the trough. If you lay it this way, you'll have buildup up here and it'll be too thick. So think about the way you're hanging your parts. And I'm just using some uh, welding rod, you know, welding wire on them to hang them just like that the next step is we're going to pre-bake our blasted metal parts at 400 degrees for 30 minutes Pre-baking the metal is a very important step to prevent outgassing. Outgassing will create pinholes or even bubbles on your coated surface. And metals like aluminum and cast iron will outgas even more than a, a mild steel or stainless steel. Okay, so I'm not gonna be hot flocking these parts, uh, so I'm gonna let them cool. You want to make sure that you always pre-bake your metal. Um, not only for the, the outgassing uh, problems that you would, you'll have if you don't pre-bake, but also for the Faraday cage effect. Because sandblasting is going to uh, electrically charge the metal and pre-baking is going to dissipate that electrical charge. So it'll help, help you uh, prevent Faraday, Faraday cage effect. So I'm gonna hang these up and just let them cool down to room temperature. I hope you found this video helpful. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching Willow's World of DIY. Until next time.